Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got some things I got to tell y'all, and this is about the lawsuit for small claims for our mortgage people. It has taken, this is 22 pages worth of a small claims lawsuit, and <laughs> let me explain something. Usually a small claims lawsuit is about five pages long, at the most, because it's supposed to be non-complicated. Hold on, I got to turn off this voice recognition. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've been doing some work for a couple of minutes here because I need to get everything ready. This is small claims court. This is for the judicial bond. Now, what we've included, I got to get, I got to do some more corrections. So y'all give me one more second. Because we we doing a lot, y'all. Look at that. That that won't even work for me. Come on now. Get over here. One second. Okay. A lot of work has gone into this. We're incorporating the rescission of contract document into the three documents that are going into the court. There is one for the judge's bond. That's right, judicial officer's bond. This will be finished complete and finished by Wednesday. All of it is done, as you can see. All of it is done, as you can see. A lot of work, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you a lot of work. I tried it. Now, see, this document right here, this one doesn't need the giraffe because this one is just the laws. Okay? This one is just <laughs> misperson of felony, judicial immunity. This one is just the thing that explains everything because especially in a rescission of contract document, we do not put any so-called case law or so-called statutes. Nope, that ain't what that document is for. Ain't what it's for. Won't do it, just wouldn't be prudent, okay? Just wouldn't be prudent. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we're about to do right now is we're about to paste. I think, do I want to do this one? Yeah, I think I want to do this one because this one's got color in living color, okay? And so this one will paste in here because, nope, it ain't got the color. It took the color away. So we're going to have to undo. And then we're going to have to redo. Got to do this one. All right. Now, there should be some. It took my color away, y'all. Oh, snap. Oh, well, y'all just won't be getting the color. All right, y'all don't need the color. I need the color. Color for me. That ain't right either. Give me a second. It's the last one. It's this one right here. That's what we need. That's the one we need. See how everything lined up? There go my color. In living color. But that's not supposed to be here. This is supposed to be down here. Come on now. Get on down here. Come on now. He's on down. He's on down the road. Hold. Don't you carry nothing that might be alone. Come on, he's on down. He's on down. He's on down. He's on down the road. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's the document. There you go. What are we going to do? We're going to go way back, back in the time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's your document. Now I get to save it. This is a document that disappeared. I am so glad it disappeared. There are so many things I've added to this document for our mortgage people. Pay attention. I'm going to show you just the last section. I'm going to let it read so y'all can hear how it read. And I haven't proofread it yet. That's why I said Wednesday. Hold on now. Like I said, it's been a lot of work, people. To ask for permission to exercise a right is to evidence that somehow the right does not exist in the first instance. I have a right after having attained the age of the majority as of my 18th year of existence, whether from conception or delivery from the womb, to gain full and complete control of the securities held in my minor account, I do not need someone's permission to gain access to what belongs to me. And because the trustees have come up with a policy, procedure, scheme to steal my property in broad daylight, amounts to trustee malfeasance, theft, and fraudulent conveyance. The courts do not tell me, that by entering their courts, that I am waiving a right by making an appearance or entering a plea. That any type of plea or appearance, whether through an attorney or otherwise, means that I am subjecting myself to servitude. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. This right here, this is the, uh, what you call a document. 
does that document right there, the rescission document. I don't want y'all to read the rescission document. I want y'all to hear this right here. Let, let's just do this right here. Right here. We're going to start with the insurance company for the bond. Okay, we're going to start here. Hold on now. Just did that today. The insurance company then entered into the contractual agreement with the defendants, providing the liability insurance have by said relationship joined as a party defendant, as a result of the obligation and duty associated with the agreement, coupled with an interest. And so, each of the aforementioned parties are being sued, charged with denial of rights while acting under color and slash or authority of law, and are therefore collectively and separately liable for damages done to my person, my reputation, my property, my image, as such damage was done knowingly, intentionally, deliberately, wantonly and with complete disregard for my secured right. Their misrepresentation and slash or their falsities and slash or their misinformations were relied upon, leading to further damage and slash or harm to my person, my reputation, my emotional state. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, see, that's not what I got to do right here. Uh-uh. We got to put an S right there. That's rights. And it hasn't been doing the S's, and so it's irritating me. Now, that S I put there, now what it wants me to do is it wants me to do this. I didn't want to do no apostema fee. Hold on now. We got to do a compensation. Okay. Compensation. One second. Compensation. compensation. Seek compensation for denial of access to the court, justice, fairness, and impartiality. In the compensation is against the bond for the official as well as the bonding agent slash company. Sorry. It, it did that too. It, it forgot the I. That's why I said I got to proofread it. All right. Let, let's do that again. Let's see. Let's watch and listen to a high flow. I seek compensation, I seek compensation for denial of access to the court, justice, court, fairness, and impartiality. and impartiality. In the compensation is against the bond for the official as well as the bonding agent slash company, and not the officials not the themselves, themselves, as this is a non-complicated non matter, matter, and I do not and wish do to not speak wish to all the complexities that shows that the officials, by having insurance, insurance get evidence of the evidence waiver of absolute and slash or qualified immunity. immunity. Sorry, y'all. I, I, it's not perfection, but you know, I had, like I said, I just did this at Improvery. Uh, I, I apologize because I'll forget later. Of waiver of absolute and slash or qualified immunity, as the reasoning would be placed before the court that if they were immune either absolutely and slash or qualified, there would be no need for insurance because there would be no recourse and slash or redress available. But as stated. It is only the bond and the bonding agent that are being sued with respect to each of the alleged perpetrator in their official capacity. capacity. The, bonding the bonding agent and the bond agent itself are not elected are not officials. officials. And, and Told you, it forgets the S's. And therefore, and are, and not therefore are not protected by immunity, by immunity because, they because they perform neither a judicial function or a public service as defined by the Constitution and the intent and will of the people. Claim on bond. Claim on bond. Request the court request to enforce the claim on the judicial officer's bond for damages, ordering the bonding agent to process the claim and to act additional fees for the time that has elapsed since the initial attempt to supply the information. And that's only because I'm using a different Bluetooth, so it ain't used to it. It's kind of loud. for the time that has elapsed since the initial attempt to supply the information required by law, and that is liability insurance proof. Redress through, Redress through small claims court. Claims court. Here's the point. Small claims court, claims court to address this issue against, against the insurance the company of the judicial officer, and the bond and as the bond right, is right to petition for redress of grievance is secured by the First Amendment. In fact, the First Amendment makes it quite clear that no one can make a rule or a law prohibiting any of the prosperity of the people who ordain the Constitution from thereby accessing. And as stated and previously, previously, I, I petitioner, the petitioner do here. Yeah, that's correct. It's not does hereby, it's do hereby. hereby. I assert that I am one of the posterity of the people who founded this nation who ordained and established the Constitution for the United States of America. I affirm the accuracy of the facts presented herein to the best of my knowledge. The information presented herein is based on first-hand knowledge and slash or facts, as witnessed by and before God as such under penalty. A copy of the foregoing has been mailed and or served upon the defendant in a manner prescribed by law, taking into account the waiver of service associated with the appearance notification. This certification, this certification verification, verification, and acknowledgement is hereby done as stipulated, stipulated within this affidavit, within this affidavit in, the in the form of a petition, petition for redress of grievance. Redress of grievance. On this click, on this tap to enter a date. So help me God. Okay, then there is, you got one signature. This is for our mortgage people. This ain't for y'all people. We're going to do one for y'all people later. Not right now. Not right there. You got that one signature. 
then you, they're gonna enter your name here and here. So this is a giraffe. This ain't no notary uh, acknowledgement. And you got another signature right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with these documents, especially getting the judge's attention. Hey, Dragon, what's up? I didn't ask for you. This is Dragon, y'all. Dragon, naturally speaking, this this is the piece of junk I use. We're going to send it back to Nighty Night Land. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just so that everybody can get it, what's going on now is most people, well, let's just say it. Nobody thought about it. Going after the bond through small claims, going the bonding company and the bond. Now, I've talked about this since 2012. I just haven't had the time. There, there's so much going on, I don't have time. I'm so busy from waking up to going to sleep. This is all I do. Everything I do is for you, <laughs> okay? For you, I will. I will. I will. I will. Anyway, I won't climb the mountains for you. I will not sell the deepest seas. I will not be your hero, your strength, anything you need. I'm sorry, that's Monica, and that's my girl. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Those of you who are part of AMCF, AmeriLegion, the uh, Secure in One's Property Program, and the DAP Program. We still have more information, more things that we're doing for you guys, but as you see, that's three different motions plus a document, um, the rescission, plus the extra information the it's called intent document give me a second this document right here small claims analysis document I said intent document it's the legal analysis and study of law document you see this let's give you all a little bit of taste taste you want a little bit of taste my father used to say want to taste you know hold on introduction introduction Promissory notes have long been used as collateral security in financial transactions. The role of the Federal Reserve in issuing these notes and the potential judicial liability arising from misrepresentations in this context are complex issues with significant legal implications. Promissory notes as collateral. First NAT Bank of Epping v. Haynes, 1858. Context, this case from 1858 discusses the nature of promissory notes as collateral security for loans. Analysis. The ruling established that promissory notes can serve as a legitimate form of collateral. It highlighted the legal recognition of promissory notes as binding financial instruments. The decision underscored the importance of clear contractual terms in collateral agreements involving promissory notes. United States v. Hannon, 1975. Context, this case deals with the rights of creditors when a promissory note is used as collateral for a government loan. Analysis. The court's decision illuminated the complexities involved when government loans are secured by promissory notes. It stressed the importance of it. Hold on, hold on. Now, remember, we talked about government loans. So the government guarantees all of these loans under the single family, single family, single family home loan guarantee program, or a single family guaranteed home loan program, however it's pronounced. Okay, go look it up. Hold on. I said go look it up. Anyway, give me one second. Once you get started, you never get down. I'm sorry. I apologize. That It said get started. So Shaka came to mind. I had a friend who, who just went and saw her concert and said she was, she was on hit. Loan agreement and promissory notes. I don't, you know, I don't want this. I did, I did this wrong. Okay. I did this wrong. Um, I don't want to look it up here because this will take me all over the, all around the world, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do P E R P L E perplexity. There she, there's them go. Perplexity, ladies and gentlemen. It says, Ask anything. I ain't asking, mother. Uh, excuse me. Whew. No, we're not signing in. We're doing this anonymously. We're perplex, 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 All right, hold on. Let's see what it's got to say. Uh oh, we got to do it here. Interesting. What are you saying, perplexity? The case United States versus Hannon, 1975, deals with the rights of creditors when a promissory note is used as collateral for a government loan. 
the court's decision illuminates the complexities involved in a government loans that are secured by promissory notes and stresses the importance of adhering to statutory requirements in such transactions. It also sheds light on the legal protections afforded creditors in these circumstances. Unfortunately, I could not find specific details about the case of Hannah providing the search. If you have access to the legal light, so it might be the wrong case. So watch what we do. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Uh, okay. Right here. Right here. Oh, I don't want to do that. That, that means I got to sign in. Hold on. We got to do this. It's a different browser, people. Give my dark screen. There you go. There's them go. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Because eyes coming. Hold on. And there we go. I don't have access. Specific blah, 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 blah. Complexities. Oh. He says he doesn't have access. He's the one who gave it to me. No, he isn't. Thank you for providing me a summary of the case. While I don't have access, here are some additional specifics of the case. Could you share more information? Oh, no. I need three more. Why did I put an E instead of an R there? Get my R. Move out of the way. My R. Mess with me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what he has to say now. Nah. He's been, they've reprogrammed him so he doesn't give case law as readily as he used to. So I go to Bard, uh, ChatGPT. Uh-oh, he says no, he ain't going to do it. Uh-uh, he, he, we, we ain't playing that. He going to give me what I asked for. Let's see. Nope. So we have to do is we have to do that. Give me a second. I'll be right back, y'all. <phone rings> Ladies and gentlemen, that first case, that's why you guys have to look up the cases. I don't. Uh, the first case he says doesn't exist. So I had him produce some mo. Watch this. A little bit mo, little bit mo, little bit mo, little bit mo. Little bit more, a little bit more. We gotta do a space so we can get that to do that. So he's saying this case right here doesn't exist. The Hannon case, it says, based on the extensive legal database, the Supreme Court case entitled Hannah, any year of that matter, though specifically with the rights of a creditor and the promissory notes. However, None of the three cases you mentioned appear to exist on the Supreme Court record. So watch this. Hold on. We're going to pair them up with the two. Okay. Just told them those weren't correct. So... This chat GPT. Apologize for the incorrect. It seems that there might be an error if you have any other specific question. Oh, God, no. You ain't doing that to me.
Come on now. Oh, now you want to be stupid. Okay, now he want to be stupid. So give me give me a second. Let me correct him. Ooh wee! I didn't know. Give me one second. Copy. No, I'm going to try it this way. Hold on. There's two ways we're going to, no, three ways we're going to do it. This is the first way I'm going to do it, by putting everything back in here again. Uh, oh, no, you not going to answer me? Okay, hold on. What's up, great? All right, this is the other way we're going to do it. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're not doing that to me. You're going to ignore me like that. You see how it ignored me? It just ignored me. It just ignored me, y'all. Sit up here and mess with me. Okay. Uh, let's see. We do that to stop it. Give me a second. Got one more little pause in. Okay. The first thing I had to do was take out the case that didn't agree. Now, this one is the FDIC versus Bledsoe. Seen this case before. This case could be relevant as it involves the Federal Depository Insurance Company and issuing around prominency notes. No. In this case, the Supreme Court case that dealt with the rights of the United States in secure transaction involving government loans. And this one is a case that addresses related priority disputes between federal government and other creditors. And no, what I tell them is no. W-I-T-H-N. Stay within my context, moron. Sorry. It likes to go places I didn't tell it to go. Uh Okay. Oh, really? However, you you gave me a however, huh? Well, let me however you. You gonna give me what I asked for? Gotta do one more pause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 